Uh, I'm Gary Burnett. Uh, I'm an honorary lecturer of uh, theology in Queen's University in Belfast in Ireland. Uh, my particular subject is New Testament. Um, I'm a big music fan as well, so um, I have a, a blog called Down at the Crossroads, which does artist uh, interviews, it does album reviews, and it explores the connections between blues music and faith. And that's something I've done in my book, The Gospel According to the Blues. Well, my love for the blues goes back um, a long time to my teenage days. Uh, a, a friend of mine uh, loaned me a couple of albums. Uh, one was an electric blues album with Peter Green and Eric Clapton and Savoy Brown and artists like that. The other was a much more raw blues album by Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. And once I listened to that music, it just really hooked me. Um, and, uh, and I really was not listening to the kind of pop music that my friends were listening to and so a, a lifelong sort of love of the blues ens ensued. Now, I, I do like other music as well but blues music is something that reaches into you, grabs you, uh, it just arrests you. It's it's something that's, that is that is raw, it's visceral um, and I think that's what the enduring power of the, the blues is because it comes out of this situation of uh, human suffering, um, the, the the situation of the black communities in the southern states in the uh, first half of the 20th century. Um, because it's real, it has that enduring power and that's why it it, it, uh, it has endured all this time. That's why that it has, um, it, has uh, it pulls in people from uh, all over the world um, because it speaks to their situation. People feel it expresses something of their condition. That's why it appeals to a white Irish guy um, and, and why it sparked my interest in, in this sort of music. Why is it theologically rich? Um, well, I think it goes back to the social context of the blues. It grew up at a time of, uh, of suffering, uh, of uh, discrimination, of injustice. The blues really came out of that as an expression of, of lament. It's an expression uh, of protest against that. Uh, underlying a lot of the, the blues songs which are about romantic love, there, it, it does arise out of that, that situation. Um, so that cry for, uh, in, uh, uh, for justice, that cry for justice um, really reminds me of the cry for justice in the Psalms. Um, and in the blues, sometimes the blues singer sings himself out of um, his blues uh, and there's hope for a better day. That also reminds me of the Psalms. So this, this cry for justice, uh, this hope for a better world, seems to me to be something that is really at the heart of the gospel, the heart of the narrative of the Bible. The Blues grew up in uh, a, a situation of terrible injustice against African Americans in the early decades of the 20th century in the southern states. Um, this was a period of, of the Jim Crow laws of terrible discrimination. Um, where there would be um, a black person, a black man would be referred to as a boy, um, where um, black men would be suspected of, um, of violence and white women, right through to um, outright violence and terrorism uh, on uh, black communities through, um, through lynching um, and through a terrible system uh, that uh, we know of now as, as peonage, um, a kind of a neo-slavery which is a combination of the judiciary, of the uh, police and of business, uh, where basically black men and women were entrapped. They'd be taken by the police for some minor misdemeanor, um, would be brought before the court, would be given a heavy fine, obviously couldn't pay the fine. The businessman would walk in and say, I'll pay the fine, sign here. And they signed their life away into uh, labor in mining camps, in timber camps, in farms. That system lasted right until after the Second World War. So we've got this terrible situation of injustice. Um, uh, and out of that comes blues music. It's a cry of Lament is a cry of protest. Um, now, most blue songs are really about romantic love. They're about the what happens between a man and a woman, says Sunhouse. Um, but underlying that, there's something deeper because it really does come out of that social context. There are some blue songs, of course, that do deal directly with the social context in which they grew up. Um, so they complain about. Jim Crow. They sing about the poverty. They sing about the disease. Um, so artists like um, like Josh White, artists like Big, Big Bill Brunsey, um, 
they, they, they talk about the discrimination that they face. So there is that thread of protest that goes uh, along in the blues as well. If we're thinking about what the blues actually is, um, there's a certain format to uh, a blues song, and if you look at it uh, musically, um, there's usually a couple of lines that are repeated, um, uh, and then another line. Um, uh, from a musical point of view, there's a certain um, uh, perhaps 12 bar um, aspect to it. There are uh, particular notes in the scale that are played that make it a blues song. But really there's much more to it than that. It's really something that comes from in here. Um, it's something to do with the complaint and the lament and the protest uh, about the way things are in, in life. Um, and that is really what the heart of the blues is. In my book, I explore the Sermon on the Mount um, through the lens of the social context of the blues uh, in the early decades of the 20th century. And it seems to me that the Sermon on the Mount is really all about the gospel. Um, so um, I think a little bit about what the gospel is in the book. Um, is it simply justification by faith that Paul talked about? Or is it something um, something different than that or something more than that? Um, is, is Did Jesus preach the gospel is a question I, I think about. Um, and for me, Jesus really did preach the gospel. And in the Sermon on the Mount, we really do have uh, the gospel. Um, in Matthew 4, we have uh, Jesus traveling around Galilee, proclaiming the kingdom of God and uh, displaying that through his mighty acts. Then in Matthew 5, he sits down in the mountain and he starts to talk about what is this kingdom of God like? What's life like under the rule of God? And we find that um, those who hunger and thirst after justice are the ones who flourish in this kingdom. Um, and as we read the sermon, we begin to see a lot of issues about, about life, what life is like uh, when God rules. That seems to me to be the essence of the gospel. And so the Sermon on the Mount is about real life. Um, so when we look at this, uh, this music, this blues music, which is very much about life. Uh, it's about the nitty gritty of life. Uh, it's about human failure. Um, it's about aspiration for a better world. And that strikes me as being what the heart of the gospel is. It's about, um, it's about what life is. It's about human failure. It's about um, the, uh, the aspiration that things can be better. All of these, these things, these themes we, we find in the, in the sermon and the blues seem to me to be a good uh, context for exploring all of that. So in the book, I explore things like uh, peace, um, like love of enemies, like wealth and possessions, um, explore systems of domination. Um, these are all things that uh, the blues uh, speak about as well. Uh, so it's a good conversation partner to really look in depth at what um, the gospel is really all about. Yeah, many people have the idea that the blues are all about, you know, things are bad, my baby done left me, you know, and, and of course, of course they are that, uh, and it is, as I've said, um, uh, the blues really are about uh, the harshness of life, the nitty gritty of life. The blues tell the truth about life. Um, uh, so the blues really are very much um, a, a lament, if you will, um, but they're much more than that. And if we look at some of the blues songs, take a traditional song like uh, Trouble in Mind. Um, so the singer says, I'm going to lay down my head on some old railroad iron. Well, that really is the blues. And yet, um, at the end of the verse, um, the singer says, the sun's going to shine in my backyard someday. So you've got these two things juxtaposed. B.B. Uh, King said in one of his songs, there's got to be a better world somewhere. So somehow the blues singer sings himself out of the situation that he's in. That reminds me greatly of some of the Psalms where you have this lament, the poor man crying to God, the person crying out for justice. But then at the end of the Psalm, there's hope again. So this dual aspect of, of despair, of lament, of a realization of what the human condition is, but the truth about the human condition, and the idea of hope, are two aspects, two very important aspects, perhaps the, the heart of the gospel.
it seems to me that that is the, the theme, if you like, the golden thread running through the narrative of the Bible. This uh, hope for uh, God to, um, to this, this hope for God to work in his world, um, to put things right in his world. Um, so the Bible tells the truth about the way the world is. Um, you know, if we read the Bible, you know, we get all sorts of stories about very failed people. All of human life is there, and yet there is this hope that God will do something to put his word right. We get that in the blues as well. In their own um, flawed way, the blues tell the truth about the human condition. There is hope for a better world. And so I think that's, a, a, again, a, a good springboard to think about some of the important issues that we find in the gospel.